Alright guys, welcome to One Life Podcast. Here with Ray. Uh, the reason I've got Ray here is a couple of different reasons. He's a professional driver, he's an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. uh, he's a friend of mine, he's an old client of mine, and just the biggest thing, just a really nice guy. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> and the beauty about well, kind of what I find with what I do is I don't get to get in depth with people. Like we're friends, we get along, we get along really well, but I don't know too much about you. Yeah. It's my way of kind of getting to know you and what made you become the way you are now. So, like, I mentioned you're a professional uh, driver. Yep. How did you get started in that? Yeah. So, that started with, you know, I just started driving. I started doing some racing. And, um, you know, I guess once I started racing, I was like, I started thinking, how do I make this, like, my life? Because, you know, I was working uh, 9 to 5, you know, working a regular job, and I was racing. When did you start driving? Like- <clears throat> I started late. So I started, I'd say late, late in my life uh, compared to, like, most people when they start racing. Uh, I started driving in 2009. So how old were you? I was uh, 29. Oh, so you didn't start, you didn't start young with no. cards and... No, like, really? I always wanted to, but I didn't. Really? Uh, so... I started racing in rally cars, uh, bought a car, started racing, That's learned, fine. yeah, yep, just really? started, and then... What just made you decide to... I mean, I always wanted to do it, and it was one of those conversations, you know, me and my wife had when we were first dating, like, hey, this is going to happen one way or another, gotcha. just so you know, and she was like, oh, okay, and so she was always knew that was going to happen, eventually we got to a point where it was like, we could do it. Yeah. Um, because it's expensive. So it was a financial thing holding you back at first? A little bit, yeah. And then, of course, just not knowing about it, right? So yeah. if I would have known you could have started a lot cheaper uh, a long time ago, I probably would have. But at the same time, I was doing other things before I decided to race because I was playing music and doing other things. So I had other interests. Yeah. This was just something I always knew I wanted to do. So once I started racing, you know, I, the you start thinking, like, how do I make this, like, more than just you know once a month or every other you know couple weeks like it, week, yeah. how do i do it more often and then uh, that's when i decided i would start kind of applying at race schools and trying to become an instructor and it was at that point when i became an instructor that you know you really start to learn the craft in a real detailed way and i really believe like when you start teaching something you really learn it You know, because you're forced to really conceptualize all the ideas and really, like, you know, make it clear to somebody learning. Yeah. So you can't teach something, you don't really know it. Yes. And when I started teaching, you know, first of all, I'm around, you know, professional, like, I'm around IndyCar drivers, NASCAR drivers. I mean, you name it. They're all different types of racing. We're all working together as race schools because we're all trying to do the same thing, like, be around cars all the time because we love all forms of racing. And, that was you know i started doing that for years and you know two years in i mean i would say you get opportunities to go and do you know uh, stuff for chevrolet and do you know hot laps and different stuff for different companies and all of a sudden you're just getting paid to do these really cool jobs filming and doing commercials and um and how how do you separate yourself at 29 opposed to someone who's been doing it the whole life like, what made you get hired over someone with 10, 15, 20 years experience? That's a, you know, surprisingly, when it comes to being an instructor, I mean, it's a, you got to be a people person. you got to be a good communicator. It's more than just the driving It's skills. more than just driving gotcha. skills. Oh, it's way more than like that. Even marketing yourself, would you say? And yeah, I'd say marketing, but I would say, as far as that goes, the race world is a very tight-knit, small community. Like, you pretty much know somebody or know somebody that knows somebody. It's really, you know... The degrees of separation is really small. Okay. So, if so going back to the networking, going back to the gotcha. networking, yeah. If you're just you know know somebody and you're being cool and people like you, then obviously you're going to get more opportunities. When it comes to being an instructor, I mean, a big portion of it is just how you talk to customers. You're going to deal with all kinds of random people, and you got to be good at it. So if you're a really good driver, but you're not very good instructor, or you don't have the patience to be an instructor. You're not going to be able to do it. So you're going to have to, you know. Really yeah. be cool with talking to communicate, patience, break things down. Totally, and it relate gets to that person, their experience, their background. Yeah, and it gets harder as you get more in depth, right? Because eventually you get so deep into, it, at least for me, where you know you're doing real technical analysis with like data, you know, coming from the car, and you get really into it. At that point, then it gets harder to teach the guy who's just starting, right? Because then you're like, 
have to really go back to like okay like the, the squ- beginning. don't just floor the brakes and like you know squeeze and the, you know like you got to really go back to the basic stuff and um that's when you really start to see the good instructors and the bad instructors and just from those two the relationships you're going to build obviously if people are going to race schools they're not poor like you're going to be getting gotcha. you're only meeting people you know and if you start doing private coaching, for example, you're only meeting guys that can afford to be dumping, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year just to be out racing. Gotcha. So the networks and the people that you're meeting, all that stuff leads to another thing. And all of a sudden, you know, you're 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 booked doing all kinds of different stuff all the time. And you're in a car, you know, four or five days a week. And it's, you know, and it's you're getting paid good money. You're, getting paid good money yeah. and you're having a good time. Now, when I say good money, I'm not saying you're going to be you know rich yeah, jimmy million. johnson yeah, or yeah. yeah you're not you're lewis com- hamilton or anything you're like comfortable that doing what you love a hundred percent you're making probably three times as much as like a teacher is going to make uh, maybe even four times as much and you're doing something you love so i would say that's a win um gotcha. what was your um what was your first car my very first car oh, your very first like racing car or rally car it was a 1997 uh subaru rs uh, coupe so it was the two-door version gotcha. um and we we left school in 97 right like you yeah. 12 so that's gotcha yeah yeah going right back yeah it was cool man that was a really cool gotcha. car um have you got a natural ability to drive you believe or you think like from watching it your whole life or being interested you picked it up quicker than others i thought i had natural ability right like everyone thinks they can drive especially when you drive a car around town everyone kind of has the assumption that, like oh, i'm a good driver like because you know you want to believe you're a good driver yeah, no one's yeah. telling themselves i'm horrible like because then they probably wouldn't even be out on the roads yeah but i thought i did then i learned that it really comes down to how you approach it and a whole like shitload of seat time like the more time you can be in the car the more you'll be able to refine all that stuff you know until you can get in a car and be in a race and be super calm like nothing's going on that's when you realize you're in a car a lot you know when the adrenaline is like not what you what it used to be okay you know you don't get so like immersed in the moment you can like consciously think about everything that's going on you know, gotcha. and so that's when you really start to become better More driver. Relax, would you say? Yeah, and even just paying attention to little nuances in the car, like what the brakes feel like. Is it starting to go away? Am I pushing the brake down a little more than I was a few laps ago? Like you're feeling everything in the car because you're just conscious of it all. That's when you know you're in the car a lot, and you you know you're be probably becoming a really world class driver at that point. That's interesting. So the first time, first time I met Ray was um, at uh, Spring Valley, right? Yeah. So it was like I was shooting video for a client, and the first time I met was hopping in the car with you. <laughs> and then, how fast? How fast we get up to around there? I don't even know. Probably like one thirty, one thirty-five or yeah. something. Yeah. And honestly, I'm not in very fast cars, or at least I wasn't back then. Yeah. And it was so weird. I never felt so comfortable going so fast, and I never felt so safe going so fast in my life. We were just having a regular conversation, and you're just ripping around this track. And yeah. It was amazing. But I, I felt safer with you doing that speed than I do like some ex girlfriends. Of course, <laughs> yeah. The streets. Well, there's there, there's something to be said for the energy in the car, right? Like you yeah. can feel when someone's like way over their head, you know. And you're in control the whole time. Yeah, right? just calm. Like you know, if something happens, you're kind of prepared for anything. You know, you you set up the car in a position where you know that it's you know optimal yeah. stuff like that. Like you, that just takes, like I said, time. Um, and of course, if you're lucky enough like me to be around really good drivers, uh, that and if you're willing to learn from them, that's the thing is when it comes to motorsports, right, racing cars, there's a lot of egos. So a lot of times no one wants to admit that they have things to learn or they could be faster. Everyone just wants to kind of prove that they're the fastest. Why, why is that? Why, is, why does ego get narrowed so much, you believe? Do you, do you think it's ego? I think it's ego. I think it's ego. Yeah, yeah. It's 100% it's the ego. the same thing happens at the gym. No one wants to feel dumb and no one wants to feel like they're not good enough or they're not the best or they're not, you know, at least one of the good ones. Uh, no one's willing to like, you know, take advice like, hey, how did you do that? Hey, how do you, you know, get that? You and know, do you, do you find by s- stepping back and asking that you learn and you progress and nobody judges you and nobody's laughing at you? You know what else I noticed? On top of all those things is the relationships I developed with the people that I asked. Oh, really? Because they... They kind of took it under the wing a little bit. Well, and they respect you so much more because they'll see, like, that you really care to learn and that you care to learn from them, 
which makes them feel even yeah, more, more special. Even right? more special. And like then that. when you learn from them, like they'll look at what you do later, like, you know, like, oh, I, I helped, like, that's so cool that I could help him get to that level. That's, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, I rode with all kinds of different guys, asking them questions, became friends with lots of different types of drivers. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, I have the opportunity to do the same thing for other people later, you know. Then I get to watch them racing, you know, super high levels, and it's so cool. And that's probably the most rewarding thing. It's so cool to just see that, yeah. And it's like, it's neat to see stuff like, you know, drivers that you are with all the time and you know where you guys compare to because you're on the track all the time together. And you can see them doing certain things, so you kind of have an idea of where you would stand. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm a big believer is doesn't matter what you say or think you can do it you know you always got to go and win a race or at least you gotcha. know show yeah. you, you got to prove it prove right it. yeah it takes me back to uh when i was like i think i was about 20 going to the gym and just just starting and there's this big guy like massive guy yeah and i just walked up to him i'm like what have i got to do to look like you yeah and for some reason i've always been comfortable to ask the questions because i don't really care about other people's opinions yep same. and he kind of yeah. just answer my questions and tell me what to do and it helped me so much but i could have kind of kept my ego high you know this guy's on steroids this guy's this and he obviously was but he obviously still knew what he was doing he had to and i yeah. learned so much by doing that and i still to this day i i'll ask i don't like to say it's dumb questions but i'll ask questions to learn because if i don't ask the questions that same thing comes back on put in two months time i still don't know the answer of it yeah it, it's crazy how our ego just we're just so worried about other people's opinions and we just won't ask. Yeah, it's, we're it's, so worried about not being enough, right? Like not feeling like we should be there. That's the other thing is if you ask a question, does that mean that I shouldn't be here? You know, like it's yeah. funny how that works. But in reality, you don't, ask, you don't learn. Yeah, it's, you don't learn. Yeah. Yeah. What's um, with racing? What's one of your coolest experiences? Something that really sticks out that you're like, I can't believe I got to race here. I met this person or I got paid to do this. Oh, man, there's. Yeah, there's there, that's a tough one there's too many cool like things that have happened you know i think one that sticks out for me is we were they just that uh, came to mind right now uh, maybe because i just saw the car uh recently but uh we were racing a chevy sonic and we were doing an event um in the high desert in california and we were one of the there was a few two-wheel drive cars and we were one of them and it was at the very last stage. We were we were pretty competitive the whole event. Um, they call they have what's called the power stage. So on the power stage, it's kind of like you can win the power stage if you're just the fastest car, right? Or in your class. So I'm only racing for two wheel against two wheel drive cars for the most part. In the whole race, obviously, you can still battle some of the all wheel drive cars as you're kind of doing your thing. But we're in a very low powered two wheel drive, you know, car and it's the power stage and we just start going you know it's the sun's going down like it's kind of like half day half night of of race we're in the mountains there's cliffs you know it's hard to see it's like and we're just just going for it doing our thing having fun staying in the moment staying super focused and we get down to the finish and we pull up and there's like a little RV tent thing where you kind of roll up and you go look at the times, you know. So you jump out of your car and you kind of run over there to see the times. So it's yep. the last stage. You kind of want to see where you ended up. And I remember sitting there waiting for my time to pop up. And it pops up and I'm so confused, you know, because I'm looking at it and it's at the top. And I'm like, what? what? I'm like kind of confused. Is it is my time not come up yet? Is it just yeah, like yeah. popped up and like because they haven't updated the time, they yes. just put my name in. Gotcha. And then I look at the time. I look at everyone else's times, and I was like, oh my god, we got the <laughs> fastest overall time. And I mean, we were already like I think third in the event or something like that, which is already amazing considering there was so many like all wheel drive, turbo powered, faster cars than us. And and we're up there in the top three, and then we win the power stage gotcha. out of all the f cars, you know. So one of the worst cars, but yeah. the best driving. Yeah, and we just gotcha. put it up there. That was that was a really cool moment. Just to like, that's when you realize like the stuff, like what we've been learning, you know, all along on road courses and all the different cars that I've been in. It it all translates like you know into yeah. into rally. It's cool. It's interesting. Not, yeah, so it was really really neat. Just keep keeping momentum forward, keeping you know the speed going forward, not just spinning tires, not yeah, just yeah, sliding, yeah. just to slide, positioning the car the best way possible. That's what it's all about. And in the dirt, you just slide more because you have to slide the car to get it to you know to to turn. Yeah. So you just don't want to slide more than you need to. So. That's crazy. What's your favorite type of racing? Is it rally? 
Yeah. I why, think, why is that? It, to me, it's like the most pure form of driving. What do you mean by that? Well, when you're racing against other people, because we did run like the United States Touring Car Championship um, in a Hyundai Veloster, and I got, you know, and I've done some other racing, Legend Cars and some other stuff. So it's fun. It's fun racing wheel to wheel. And the cool thing about racing wheel to wheel. Yeah, like yeah, side by side, like different. Yeah. The cool thing about racing wheel to wheel is it doesn't matter how fast the cars are, the racing's all. It's all about the racing. You can be in a Miata, you can be in Corvettes, you can be in a go kart, you can be in freaking anything, a, a chump car, like a, just a little five hundred dollar piece of crap. Yeah. And the racing is what it's all about. It's about going to the corners and racing people, and that's fun. But you're never gonna have like the perfect line. You're always gonna be kind of fighting for the gotcha, position. position. You're okay. always passing people. It's like you know, it's kind of like a little bit of survival and a little bit of like you know gotcha. be skill, and, skill yeah. and luck and, and like, a few other things yeah, kind of get taken out in the yeah. corner yeah if some newbie's there and he just happens to just like miss the corner and just takes you out you know and you're that's, on that's out of your hands it's right? out of your hands it, it is what it is yourself. you crash it's, it's you and the you. co-driver gotcha. it's you're you're you know the, the surfaces are always changing in the dirt and in the snow and on tarmac so you're kind of just going through so many different surface changes you never know when you come through the corner if it's going to be the same you don't see the same corner maybe once maybe you'll see it twice during the whole event but a lot of times you're seeing that you're not going to see the same corner twice so gotcha. every corner is different so you're, constantly, you're constantly on top of it gotcha. you, you have no the rhythm you get in is with the car itself not with like the actual course okay whereas on a track you kind of get into a rhythm with like you know you've done these 10 turns you know three, yeah, yeah 300 yeah. times like gotcha. you're just in the, you're just doing gotcha. the your hands are doing the exact same thing but in the dirt it's never going to be like that gotcha. so you, it's way more pure where you're just completely with the car and your co-driver and really just trying to kind of find a real good flow together and reading the surface and you know that's adjusting what does that. it. Yeah. And that's what does it you're does just it so, you. it's so like that's interesting. And doing rallies, you get to see some of the most beautiful areas you would never see because you're in kind of you're in places where there's nobody. Uh, yeah, isolated yeah. areas. So right? like, yeah. and you're in the mountains, or you're like you're Have even you traveled the world. No, yeah. not not yet, but oh, just just the states. Yep, for, yep, just gotcha. the states. And so you compete around the country in yep. America. Yep. Okay. But even just that, like you're in such oh, a yeah, cool. Yeah like well, areas snow like, and desert and just yeah, beautiful of, areas yeah like you're like man you just want to stop but you're like oh i got to get to my next time control you know so <laughs> how, do you, how do you know where you're at do you do you know where you're at when you're racing or is it just you don't know till you finish that that section like yeah the time if you got is your cut you you could get updates from the when you finish a stage you turn in and look like a time card basically well, and then they the mark stage? it yeah, you got to finish the stage. So while you're doing that stage, you got you're just doing the. Best you have no you idea. Can. Yeah. So you could be coming first. You could be coming last. Yeah, and you know what? To be honest, I wouldn't want to know. Like you're so there's so much other stuff you're like focusing on. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, would that be a pro of a con though? It mess. I think it messes with you when you start looking at like all the times during the event. I actually had a thing where I didn't want to know at all. Like what was oh, going on, uh, and so the, the end of the day, I would kind of check it out, but okay. I don't want to know like any of my times throughout the day. Interesting. Like, because what does it matter, right? Like if you're driving as fast as you can and doing the best you can, you can't go yeah, any that's, faster, that's that, right? Like yeah, like the that's only thing, the yeah. only thing you're gonna do is try harder, which is probably gonna make you make a mistake. More pressure, and then you're gonna yeah, and then you're gonna do something stupid. So, so you just get in the zone, and just one corner after the next corner. Just do your thing, that. yeah, yeah. Just getting you do your thing. Remember why you know what, what's so fun about it. Be in the moment. Very interesting. So, what is what is your dream car? You could have any car, no budget. What is the, the ideal car for you? Right now, what I really want, <laughs> <laughs> I actually just want um, like a retro mod, like replica, like the like a 1958 Porsche Speedster. Really, I really want one of those. Uh, I want the convertible top. And but I wanted to have like AC and like just a little radio in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to look completely like original, but you know, have some updated stuff in it. You know. How much do they go for? I mean, you could probably get one built for like sixty to eighty thousand. Okay, it's not too bad. It's nothing crazy, but it's just a cool car that I really like. Like I, gotcha. I like more classic looking. Yeah, yeah. Like there's just so much more history there. Um, you know. Is it a V8 or a V10? No, it's not even that. It's a, it was a Volkswagen engine inside there. Oh, it was like a tiny little four cylinder. Oh, was it really? Yeah, in fifties there really? wasn't there wasn't too many uh, gotcha. big okay. motors. Yeah, but that's that's the car out of every car right now. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I love it. It's so like pure to what you know. It was racing. 
you know, when it started, it was just manufacturers building a car and then they would go race it. Like there wasn't like a specially built race car for the most part. There was here and there, but for the most part, most racing was done with regular cars. Didn't Henry Ford race his uh, Model T or something? Yeah. That Back was, in the day? Yeah. <laughs> that was the car. That was the original car. Well, and that's how rally started. It was a way for manufacturers to put their cars and race each other. It was oh, originally it, uh, it was originally started as a manufacturer's international championship or something like that. Gotcha. It was them building a car that was production built. They would go race it with each other and put it on all different surfaces as it kept growing. Eventually, the World Rally Championship came in and picked it up. and That's where it came from. Yeah, that's where so it started. When did that start, like, rally, right. officially? 19, what was the first one? Was like 1906 or 1918? Oh, I can't remember gotcha. now. But okay, so yeah. wow. It was basically some of the first forms of racing. Interesting. Yeah. What is your worst crash? I'm sure you've had a ton, right? Yeah, I've had a ton, and I've been pretty <laughs> lucky with, like, the violent you know how violent they were um i mean i've had some funny ones i remember the first time i met you like yeah i rode my car on the weekend yeah <laughs> I, saw, I don't you probably don't remember that yeah, it was that. Well, probably the sonic <laughs> yeah i think you showed me some pictures and the car was on its roof yeah <laughs> yeah and I, so what was the crash uh well we were, we were just doing uh, the idaho rally and i don't know if it was a lack of you know it's hard to sometimes to remember the moment but we were coming downhill um you know me and a co-driver he was not as ex like super experienced so i'm not putting it on him i'm just saying like he had said some on uh, whatever he had said and i'd asked for a repeat like because i didn't quite hear what he said because it was quiet and yeah. we were like in the moment um and then he repeated it by that time you know i started kind of squeezing my brakes and uh we got we came really close to kind of going off the edge i managed to save it from going off but when we came you know so the force when it swung back over to the other side kind of pushed us up against the mountain so we started kind of coming up sideways up the mountain which i thought okay cool we're just going to kind of come back down and it'll be all good yeah but as we were coming up the mountain i'm still trying to slow the car here and there without you know just locking them up there was like a a log a, a trunk that was sticking out of the mountain that and we so hit bad. that with our right side and the car just stopped but instead of just falling straight down like the nose dove down and fell and then it just slowly rolled up onto its lid. Yeah. Like in slow motion, you can hear me like going, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was just rolling and it just kind of slowly rolled over. So, so. rolled forwards yep. onto the roof. Right onto the roof, yeah. Well, there. it was kind of even just on the windshield. I didn't even get to the oh, roof because it was so slow, the so rollover. You just like love stuff upside down. Yep. Like, crazy yeah and so that was that was a funny moment how fast were you going when you hit the by the time i hit the lock probably like 30 miles an hour okay. we were probably going pretty slow at that Still. point yeah gotcha that's yeah. nuts and yeah. you've rolled a, a bunch of cars uh we, we yeah we went off a different time went off a cliff um the car didn't roll though but that was that was pretty interesting yeah it was probably like 20 feet oh really yeah and the car landed kind of flat but we got lucky on that one because there was a bunch of baby trees growing so we <laughs> It didn't like completely destroy the car. It just kind of like bent the control arms on one side, and that was. Gotcha. Yeah, we got uh, pretty lucky there too. Is your wife ready to kill you some days? <laughs> yeah, she, she freaks out if the, if the things aren't updated. It's funny. Uh, yeah. Um, what was your first business? Because you've had a bunch of businesses. Yeah, there. first business was actually uh, we were making aftermarket parts for a Chevy Sonic. Uh, we kind of started just that as like, a, hey, we can make parts for this car. It's kind of cool. Could be a fun car that people might be into. And, you know, from that, that to me was, I call that a failure because it was not, obviously didn't, we didn't, we sold some parts, but we didn't sell a lot of parts to make it really like, oh my God, we were making money. Yeah. Um, but from that, I learned so much like that was probably the first you know building a website learning how to take payments um you know adding products descriptions pictures like just the whole process of like how to put products online how to sell stuff uh, i learned a lot you know you quickly realize that it comes down to like you need to have just the more products you have and the more people you can get to your site then obviously that's how you get more sales if you have a very limited supply of like specialized niche products well your market's going to be really niche which means you're probably not going to sell that much stuff yeah so okay. that kind of was a quick you know we realized that quickly that was like business 101 for you like yep. starting you feel like you learn more by by doing that than you would have like trying to read about it or learn about oh, of it. course there's no way yeah because from that point you know i know knew exactly how to just 
pop up a website, buy yeah. the debt web address. I knew exactly how to set up payment. Like at that point, I could just kind of pop something together real quick. Yeah, like I already knew how that worked. Um, so when we, you know, decided to do like Vegas Rally, which was kind of the next business after that, um, it was a lot easier to figure out all that stuff. The hard part was Vegas Rally is that you know we had so many big things we had to kind of get in place like land and yeah, you know land. permits yeah. and you know making sure we can do it there and insurance. You Nobody, know, uh, told us uh, endangered. Totals, Correct. Totals, there was just a lot more you know red tape around all those gotcha. types of things. So that those were the challenges with that, and again, you learn a lot. Um, that I call like a base hit because like it wasn't a big grand slam, but we did well enough to where it was like you know it made money and and it paid everything, and we were doing well enough. Uh, the the things I learned from that one was you know giving control to another company when we partnered with Speed Vegas. Um, that was my I guess that was the demise of it at that point because at that point it wasn't up to me what happened to it you know mm. we had no other things in place we had no land we had no so at that point it was just kind of if you know like with what happened with us uh speed vegas decided to merge with exotics racing another driving experience and when they merged together they gave operational control to exotics racing which basically wanted no partners and nobody involved so at that point you know uh they basically we were done like what else are we going to do i can't yeah it's you know so as soon as you partner with Speed Vegas, you kind of lost control of. A little, yeah, I gave what, control over what to them. What made you kind of go with Speed Vegas in the first place? Well, we were really far out location wise uh, from the strip, so we were we knew being closer that our revenue would go up. Uh, we knew partnering with somebody who already has a big established facility that we could go to, you know, was kind of like us giving up a golf ball and kind of you know but sharing a watermelon is kind of how i looked at it you know so which it was it was great when we were there it kept getting better and better every you know every month um until obviously the merger happened and then at that point it just stopped but but you learn you know it's what you learn a lot and you grow and and that's yeah and that's that's one of the things i love about you is you just you always look at things not a not as a positive, but you always, you always just, it is what it is, and now I've got to move. No get, point, I got to move. Yeah, I was at no point complaining about it, telling a thousand people it, it's business. It's, yeah, it, it is. It is business, and like from their perspective too. Like I know they have their relationships and their vendors, and they have their things that they got going on, and you know the, the, they, they they didn't want some other any businesses there because we Speed Vegas was partnered with other businesses. They didn't want obviously any other businesses so to have any say. Yeah, they yeah, basically yeah. just they want complete control of the whole operation, and you know. I guess they'll we'll see if it works out for them. Yeah, like, yeah, gotcha. Um, what is what are some of the cool things you you learned by running that business, like with Vegas Rally, like whether you before Speed Vegas when you're with them, like I know you mentioned that you learned a lot from seeing a bigger successful company, and you took a lot from that. Yes, I learned a lot from from being a part of that company. So that's probably the biggest win is being you know around the CEO and you know the all the, the operations manager and like learn like being there watching this big you know monster kind of work and and what it took to get it to go and you know the things that they look at and learning from their mistakes too learning right? from their mistakes learning from their stories hearing about it, just learning what worked and what didn't and Man, like, I'd say for me, though, the things that I learned from Vegas Rally previous to partnering with Speed Vegas was there's the ideas you think are important, like, to buy and to, like, get and, like, what you think people want. And then there's, like, the reality of, like, what you just need, right? And keeping those in check is what I learned because there was times, you know, I'd buy something because I thought we would need it and we really didn't need it you yeah, know it was uh, like uh, did i did are you talking we, about like stick first automatic anything like, like that, that. Yeah, yeah exactly anything because like to, that. to a rally driver driving manual is the most important thing i'm guessing totally yeah and then to do automatics like it's kind of like cheating but to a 20 year old girl wanting to drive a rally car she's probably never driven a stick in her life correct 
that's it's just probably a huge deal. Yes, that's the stuff yeah. that didn't matter. And you know, it's funny because all of our cars were manual initially, and we once we got autos, like our revenue went up <laughs> like forty percent or well, something you crazy. You just opened the door to another fifty percent of the market. Correct. It's because yeah, we're the same. Like we're what you're forty two. Uh, 43 I just turned 43 I just turned 43 yeah yeah we're both the same age so we I grew up driving sticks I'm sure yep, just like same. you did yeah but since having an automatic I've never driven a stick again and I probably never will yeah it's uh, and people younger than us probably never driven a stick so it's it's yeah it's kind of like not necessarily what I want but what do we necessarily need correct and those whether, are, whether you like it or not yep yeah so that would have been a better move initially just getting autos and maybe having one manual uh, for the real enthusiasts because surprisingly, you know, you only get you get people who like the idea of rally, but necessarily don't know like how to drive a stick. <laughs> so, like, how often would you get the enthusiasts where, where they would want the stick? I'd say one out of ten, probably. Oh, so you still would, yeah, get you, it. yeah, you would still get it, but not enough to have more than one car. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's gonna be hard, right? Yeah, and then see, then there's the people too. You get people that like th- they they drive a manual. And so they think they want to drive a manual on course, and then they realize how much harder it is and how much work it is, and it yeah. takes the fun out of it because all you're doing is thinking about where you're going to shift to instead of just driving the car. Yeah, you yeah, know, and having so. you know, and actually going faster. So, you, it, would it be easier to learn um, on an automatic and then bring in the stick later on if mm-hmm. you're, or are you better off just like starting from scratch and just slowly building up? It's like anything else. The more you just do it, the easier it is. So I would just say. If yeah. just yeah just gotcha. get a manual just keep driving it <laughs> gotcha. to the point where it's you don't even think about the fact that you're in a manual you just shift easy and everything's easy yeah, and that's it's automatic yeah. but then as soon as you go and try and do it on track you're gonna have to learn the proper way to do it because there is technique to using a manual you know yeah a road course or anything like that um you're a you're a big reader you love like business books things like that mm. where did that come from uh i've always liked reading to some degree i got into more reading you know business and other stuff as you know you realize how much information you can get it's like and when did you kind of realize that was it when you first started your first business no it was probably through probably when i when i was in my early uh 20s you know when i was in college and stuff like that because you learn so much stuff in college and a lot of it you don't really need, but you do learn interesting things, and you realize how much cool stuff you can learn from books. Yeah. So, do you remember your first book? First, uh, I, I mean, I remember my first spiritual, you know, kind of book. Um, that was the Tao Te Ching, which is basically just like a bunch of kind of philosophical poems okay. that was published like pre the Bible or something like that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, that book was probably the first book that I kind of read and like the poems themselves were so interesting. And the more you kind of understood the poems, the more deeper they went into like, you know, life philosophy. And that's where I really, that probably got me started just on, then I started wanting to read more books on all kinds of different types of philosophy and spirituality and all that kind Just of stuff yeah one thing led to, yeah, another, thing led to another and then you know you realize if you want to get good at this thing well there's probably thousands of books you can read to give mm. to kind of help you make that jump a little easier so what, what's what do you think the difference between like reading and actually applying is like to you like i feel like you you like perfectionist paralysis a lot of people like just read 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 take no action how do you how yeah. do you balance the two in your opinion yeah uh I still think that action and just going and doing it is going to be way more beneficial than reading a thousand books um, because there's something about the personal side of going through the process that is going to stick with you and help you really grow than just reading a bunch of books. You can't really fail at reading, can you? No, you can't fail at reading. You can't internalize all the stuff, you know, when you're reading it. Uh, You can't, you can't. You can't figure out problems when you're reading, mm, and when you're no matter how much, no matter how much it, you yeah. think about it, you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be in the situation where you have to figure it out. 
and that in itself becomes a skill is how to like navigate situations that are difficult how to get through certain situations no book's going to be there for you to like oh it's for this exact situation you know mm. it's not going to be there or if that situation happens then you can go out and try to find information to help you make that decision right yeah but you can't yeah you, i feel like you learn more by starting and jumping and then you ever do totally planning, planning all that stuff yeah and you know in my case with vegas rally there was no books on how to start a you know rally car driving experience that's the thing right so yeah. like you, you know there's starting this the business there's uh, starting this and there's but it really gave you no real like you know well how do i get land how do i get a permit how do i figure out the turtle situation like how do i you know like yeah. there's so many things that are there that you really it's more like you just have a bunch of wood in your arms and you're going to jump in the water and then you're going to figure out what you got to build you know do you need a sailboat do you need a boat with a paddle like what yeah. it, you know then you figure it out once you're kind of like in that. the water a little bit so giving yourself enough i guess room to be able to swim a little bit longer that might be a, a better way to look at it but just you got to start Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. One thing I picked up from what you're saying is, um, like being around the right being around the right people has made you grow mm -hmm. as a, as a driver, as a businessman, as a person in general. I'm guessing. Yep. How how do you put yourself around the right people? Like, how have you done it? How would you encourage someone else to kind of get around the right people and become the person that they meant to be? Uh, you know, take you you have to take like a real kind of serious look at what who you actually hang out with because you're naturally going to kind of want to hang out with the people that are easiest to you that feel more comfortable to hang out with those aren't necessarily going to be the people that are going to help you become the best person right it's mm. sometimes awkward you know to be hanging out with the ceo for example right like when i first you know and i know this sounds funny but just on a personal side like when I was first starting Vegas Rally, I remember meeting with different CEOs and different companies like to see if they would be interested in working with us. And I mean, it's super awkward, you know, talking to this guy who's like, you know, my mind was like, he's already, he's way above where he knows so much yeah. more. He's in such a different place than I am right now. I'm like just this little, like, I felt like just a kid trying to get started, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're like, you know, like, uh, looking at me. During the Sioux, they got million dollars in the bank. Yeah. And yeah. they're just, you know, it's a different perspective, but the more you kind of just did it the more you realize like hey like they're just people uh you know they have likes and dislikes and they have a whole different life outside of their ceo title and they were in the situation you were in one day too so it's like but being around them and deciding to just like hey like try to hang out with them when i could um asking them you know can we have coffee with me or whatever and just those situations may feel awkward but eventually it doesn't and it just feels like those are the people you should have been hanging out with forever <laughs> you know it's gotcha. like it just feels like man why wasn't i hanging out with these guys before it's, it's, it's pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to, to totally and grow yep and eventually it just feels normal gotcha. you know just like racing cars like being in a car now and going around a track doesn't feel like i don't want to say it takes away some of the cool factor of it but it's not as like oh my god as it was before no, i totally agree yeah I, I get in a helicopter now my heart rate doesn't change yep. it's just like any in an uber yeah and i hate i hate it but i love it i love the fact i can do that but yeah. i hate the fact it's like i'm in a helicopter like helicopter i'm in a race car and it's like eh, it's just okay now it's just growing it's, right so yeah you grew, and now you got to go find another challenge and so how do you find that next challenge how you how do you personally push yourself out of that comfort zone now and how do you keep growing you know it's it's the stuff that i really don't want to do that's the stuff i kind of like put on a list of like okay i gotta go that way a little bit somehow and then you know it, eventually you figure out a way to do it you know like like I've always liked doing, you know, stuff on camera and being recorded and all that stuff. But, you know, at the same time, there's like some reservations to it, right? Like, you know, is it going to work? Am I just going to put out all this stuff? No one's going to care and all that. Mm. And, you know, eventually you just have to do it, right? And eventually it seems like it's just kind of happening whether I wanted to or not. Yeah. So you kind of end up putting yourself in the situation where it's going to happen one way or another. So and if you don't do it, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Like, let's, that, the content I put out, things I put out, I'm like, is anyone watching? Does anyone care? But then I'll get a call. And I, like, I just had a meeting last week with a company. And I was like, yeah, I haven't talked to you for three years. We now want to hire you. Yeah. Never. Cool. Yeah. 
just you know what I mean it's just like a huge company it's just if I didn't do all these little things and I didn't pop up every single day I wouldn't have that meeting I wouldn't have got that new client and that's that yeah so I'd rather more people know me and what I do and what I'm about than nobody so okay I want to I want to touch on, so real estate is a big thing to you. Yes, it has become a really big thing to mm, me. Yeah. And that's that's kind of where you're headed, right? Yeah, and it's funny because I don't think I have the best timing right now with it, but... <laughs> and, and the, but it's the fact you're, you're, you're thinking about it, I'm you're thinking learning about, about it, it yes. you're preparing. I am, and I'm going to start making some, I'm not going to act, I'm actually already in the process of, you know, purchasing some stuff and moving forward with it. I'm trying to be very kind of cautious. I'm cautiously optimistic about everything that's going on right now because um, I do feel like there's a little bit of like FOMO going on in the real estate world with, you know, everyone feels like they're going to miss out if they don't get something now. There's a lot of investors getting in. There's a lot of crowdfunding and there's a lot of all this stuff going on in the world with real estate. So I'm excited about it, but I am also like kind of when everyone's getting in, I feel a little... Mm. You know, like yeah, sure. maybe my timing's not the best. Why, um, why real estate? What, what is it about it that interests you? Um, I like how, as strange as it sounds, how kind of boring it can be. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like it's so just you're buying something that's a real asset. Like, you know, and some people may argue with me, but you buy Bitcoin, you buy Apple stock, you're you're buying part of the company, but you're, you know it's not like super tangible mm -hmm. and with real estate you're buying like a real tangible thing like it's you like the brick and mortar it's you brick like and mortar see, it's it, a real you thing know. they're not making any more you know no one's gonna just find more real estate right now unless yeah. we get to mars then i'll try and be there for that first <laughs> land thing but um <laughs> at the at this point in time you know it is what it is it's what we got so it's if you look at it too, just from a historical standpoint, I mean, it, the same, the areas that grow just keep growing. It's not, it's mm. super reliable on that regard. And I like a lot of the tax benefits of it, you know, and if you're starting to think bigger and you're starting to think, you know, you want to make a certain amount of money that's going to be putting you in that one percentile of the population, then you're going to have to start thinking, how do I keep it? Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's what I'd be comfortable with, right? Because it's yep. nothing wrong with crypto, it's nothing wrong with shares, it's nope. nothing wrong with real estate. Not at all. But you got to be inside. You got to be in one of them, if not all of them. Yes. And real estate seems to be where you want to go right now. Yep. And you also got the leverage factor, which I know you're a huge fan of. Yep. Right. Yep. Talk to me about that. Sure. I mean, you know, you can. There's so many kind of different ways of, of you know, getting a loan. If someone's going to give you some money, you know, even if it's at whatever interest rate, if if it's at five percent for a hundred grand right and you're able to make 15 percent on that hundred grand i mean that's basically someone giving you money to go make money for yourself and yeah it's like just to me it just makes so much sense right it's a win-win for you it's a win-win for the bank everybody's kind of happy um if you're doing it right it's a win for your tenant or your renter or you know whoever's whatever type of vehicle you decide to do so for me it makes it makes the most sense and it's the best place to do that is in real estate we Be can't really do it anywhere else can you not you really exactly like yeah living. you could do it with companies if you're buying and selling companies a little bit yeah there's some ways to you know probably do some loans for that um but but then again you know you're relying on good management and good this and you need good management too when you're doing real estate but it's still like more of a tangible thing it's going to be worth something whether you have a manager in it or not right yeah yeah, yeah. If, if, even if the manager is horrible it might hurt your numbers might not make as much money but it'll still be doing something yeah right? gotcha. so um are you on it's good uh with multifamily are you headed or are you i do plan on getting there um to this next first couple years uh, i'm going to be focusing on short-term rentals in very specific kind of areas okay yeah and then down tracking into multifamily yep in two years and i'm going to start multifamily so that'll also give me some time to kind of figure out exactly what's going on in the market and kind of see you know where things are going maybe i'll wait who yep. knows but you know for the next couple years obviously we know it's going to keep going up at least for the you know yeah the current situation so getting some specific short-term rentals and areas where we can where it's drivable so i'm not 
thinking anywhere like Hawaii or anything like you know where it's gonna you have to fly to it. To it's got to be time. yep. Okay. High volume of people that drive in, uh, you know, looking at if there is some kind of drop in the market and people are losing their jobs, well, people are still going to go on trips. They're just not going to fly to Mexico or fly. They're probably just going to drive to some, you know, area two or three hours from home. So we're looking at some stuff like that where there's heavy, heavy volume of traffic that gets driven to and people stay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Crypto, NFTs, I know like you're a smart guy. I know you try mm-hmm. to stay aware of things. I know you're not maybe not necessarily want to get into that right now, but what's what's your thoughts on that? If, like I'm trying to stay I'm trying to stay educated with it, but I'm also like getting lost sometimes. It's tricky, right? It it's, is tricky. It's tricky because there's it's it's on top of a whole layer of bunch of layers of really technical, intricate stuff that's going on behind the scenes, right? Um, that it's that's hard to understand for people that aren't in the tech world so i think it's cool and i'm i am very interested in the nfts and what's going on with crypto i think it is happening one way or another i just am trying to do my best not to like try to do too many things at once gotcha. you know i want to like focus on one thing and so you're not like oh i'm missing an opportunity like you're like i'm gonna play it safe with what i know and what i'm passionate about yes to some like overnight quick fix like and and i do i i think that there's people that are gonna get the overnight thing and i think it's gonna work i think some people will have that happen but that's gonna be one percent like of the people that yeah. are gonna get that that home run everybody else is gonna lose the money you know it's mm. gonna be a zero sum game a little bit so like how do you, how do you, um, I feel like you only ever hear about, like, like, I always think about it, it's like people go to Vegas and gamble. You always hear, you always hear about the winners, you never hear about the losers. Yeah. And you never hear about how many times they lost to get that win. Yep. And I feel like it's the same thing with, like, crypto, and, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I feel like you no, always just hear about the best of the best of the I best. agree. And, I mean, all you have to do is look at how big the hotels and casinos are and how much money they spend to get people there. Yeah. And you, you realize, like, well, obviously... They've got the upper hand. They're, yeah. They're, every, the money. they're definitely is more losers, a lot more losers. So I think that crypto is going to be a little bit like that in the beginning. Um, I think there's some smart people out there doing, you know, making some good money. But to scale it, I don't know. And I personally, like, I want to get to a point where I don't have to sit and stare at a screen to make money. Like, I want to, like, you know, just be able to kind of spend a little more time. I want to buy my time back, basically. So if I can invest in things that give me more time, that's what I'm more interested in. Which is kind of, as you get older, that's, that's the most important thing, The most right? important thing is time. Yeah, yeah it's time, 100%. If, You're not gonna... time gives you family, gives you health, gives sure. you fun. Is there traders right now trading like Bitcoin and Ethereum? And, you know, they're, are they sitting there on their computers making money 9 to 5? Sure, there are probably some people crushing it right now doing that. Yeah. I, I do know that. But do I want to do that? Do I want to go to sleep at night with millions of thoughts and like what's going to happen in the market in the morning because I don't know Greece is having issues with whatever like yeah no I don't I don't want so that it's just comfortable for you yeah I mean, that's the most important thing yeah um, you seem like a very like positive happy person how do you how do you balance everything how do you like your family you got children you yeah got business how do you balance that how do you I uh, definitely like, health, like yeah. Uh, well, it comes to it's. I personally think it starts with my mental health first. So I Real personal mental health. Yeah, really, just making sure you know with kids, it gets really that the, as soon as your kids wake up, it's pretty much just chaotic in the mornings. You know, with stuff going on, you are thinking about someone else first all the time. So I really try to get up before them and have time where you know, even if it's thirty minutes, just for myself, just okay. to like kind of gather my thoughts to wake up. Um, write down a few things maybe I want to get done for the day you know go through some gratitude of just like I'm grateful for like you know the morning my coffee my wife yeah kind of do that and you know you can do a lot of that kind of stuff just as you're getting up but just to have that quiet in the morning before they get up is really important Uh, and then of course having a little bit of that before you go to bed you know that kind of helps a, a lot ray, ray time yeah a little ray time <laughs> just a little bit i mean it's nothing crazy just maybe to write in my journal i just kind of write you know my thoughts for the day or what what i learned or 
just anything that's yeah. on your mind, you know. What, what's fun for you? Is it fun for you uh, time by yourself? Is it with family? Is it a bit of both? It's a little of both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's fun by yourself? As I've gotten older, I really enjoy my time by myself. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, so like, do I. like a lot. Mm. And... Um, you know, you almost don't want to say that <laughs> because it, but it's not a bad thing. It's not. It's but just. I don't know, but I agree. It's funny to come and say. I like that myself. Out. I like hanging out with myself. I enjoy <laughs> if you like time with myself. <laughs> like, like I like hearing the thoughts and the way I look at life. And you know what? The more time I spend by myself, the more I feel like, oh, I want to. I I miss my family. So yeah. it's, it's funny how that works. But that's where those big feelings come from. You know. That's interesting. It's yeah. in that balance. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so want to get in, uh, for people who want to get into racing, want to become a driver. What's mm-hmm. what's your advice? Where do you kind of point them? Um, it depends where you live. Uh, it depends how much money you got. And so, say, so don't worry about the area. Don't worry about if I've got a lot of money. What what is the best approach? Uh, best is, approach is it, just, is it reaching out to someone? Is it offering to clean their car? Is it is it like how do you build those relationships to kind of get something? Yeah, I mean, there's it's, again, it's it, that's hard. I think everyone's situation is going to be a little bit different. Um, but getting to where are people, where are the races being held? Where's the tracks? Where's is, is there a school nearby? Is there, um, you know, some car club that's a motorsports based club that like you know races like the Porsche Club or something like that that goes to tracks? Um, can you get a you know, a job maybe working at a, some kind of experience center where they're doing driving experiences, you know, just what, like volunteering and stuff too. Like, yeah. That's like a, if I was a 16 year old kid, if you I wanted to race kid. rally, the first thing I would say is go volunteer in an event, a real rally event. Okay. And just, you know, here, suck getting here. Yeah. Right yep. Hang out with the organizers, the volunteers. Uh, you'll, you'll learn, first of all, you'll learn how the races actually work, which is a big eye opener for most okay. people. Um, and then you'll get to meet all the drivers and all the people and you'll you'll see the cars going by you'll learn the flow of the event and that's a big deal because it'll kind of help you understand a lot about what it's going to take for you to do it you'll get to see a lot of different cars and you'll see a lot of different budgets and um at this point in time my suggestion for anybody that wants to get started in racing if you really want to be a driver figure out a way to get a simulator you know, oh, really? and get online. Yep. How much are you looking at for a simulator? To- uh, like a decent one. You're probably looking, I mean, I'm talking all the hardware, wheel, everything. I mean, you could probably spend 3000 bucks and probably get started. So that's not bad. It's not bad. And considering you're going to be able to race as much as you want. How, like, so with uh, me doing like drones and simulators, amazing. That's what made yeah. me the pilot in today. How much does it help with like real it's life It's one of the only uh things that helps that translates to real life it really does yes because you're using the same muscles with your feet and your steering your eyes if you're using like the oculus or something like that which is what i recommend you actually have to like look through the corners like you would yeah really yeah you would like you know you look through the corner just like you would you're getting ready to turn you're looking you know through the corners if you have the screen you're not going to be have that same sensation you're kind of like looking around the screen okay and in real life you're not you're looking over your shoulder so that would be really beneficial you're learning if you're playing on iRacing, racing for example you're learning tracks that are real tracks so really? you you'll be racing on real tracks I'm glad I asked you that. yep you'll be the tracks you race on you can go that track and you'll drive on it and it'll feel exactly like gotcha. it'll look very familiar maybe the trees are a little bigger or whatever but like yeah the track itself will be the so same you do that for six 12 months and you go on a real car you're going to be a better driver it's going to help you for sure wow that's interesting yeah. Because yeah. I know the drone is not a day difference. Yep. That's what made me able to fly the way. It really, but remember, simulator's yeah. hard. It's not an arcade game. It's, no, and it sucks. It's not Forza it with everything so turned long. on. Yeah. It was horrible for so long. It's really hard. Gotcha. But it helps you gauge all that stuff, you know, your speed and all that stuff. It helps you learn that part of it. Interesting. And you can't get hurt. And you can't get hurt. Which is the best bit. Yeah, and you can do it as much as you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, yep, and and even right now that that world is growing so much i mean there's people that are getting sponsorships through it um there's oh, more from like vr yeah oh wow because they're live streaming these races gotcha. so you got commentators and, and everything not slowing down that's no getting it's getting better it's getting better and better, better. 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 yeah gotcha. you got people like you know they'll to put their stuff on the car they'll get you know 100 bucks for an event and then if they win the race or they get you know first second or third they get a little payout maybe another 150 gotcha. bucks for first so you can do you know pay from your living room 
Yeah, you can make a couple hundred, two hundred fifty bucks a day if you're, Very you know, cool. or even more depending on. The hey, you don't have to wait for a driver's license. It'll be sixteen to get started. You can be started nope. at eight years old. Any age. By the yeah. time you're twenty nine, you're pretty damn good. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's some competitions that are even translating where if you win like the championship, you'll get, you know, a seat time in a real car. Oh, really? They're doing some cool stuff like that now too. So. Very cool. Yeah. I'm um, someone looking to start a business. It, it, yeah, they just they're not taking that step. How do you? What's your advice on just giving that kick in the butt? I mean, they're scared of failing. They're scared of other people's opinions. They're scared of losing money. Like, what? Do, what do you kind of tell them? I think that when you look at a lot of people that have a lot of money, they don't look at money the same way, and. I think that that's something to kind of take into consideration when you're going to start is maybe your relationship with money is the issue. You know, you're looking at money like it's worth more than it really is. Like money can always be made. You can always go get a job. You can always like work somewhere and make money. You can always live and have your food and all that stuff. But to go and try and start something new, you're not always going to have that chance you're eventually going to get old and not be able to do it. So, you know, mm. what are you waiting for? <laughs> like, So you're saying, like, the only thing you're going to have is regret. The only thing you're yeah, going to have is regret. And I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, and that's as, it. As you get older, it starts to get quick, and you're like, wow, I wish I did that. And yeah. I, I, I never want to say I wish I tried that. I wish I did that. Yep. I want to say, yeah, I failed, and I failed hard, but I did it. Yeah, I would too. And yeah, you right. won't regret failing. You'll regret if you don't try. And... Like, I like that. Can you say that again for me? You will. Uh, you you will not regret a failing. You will regret try, not like trying. It. It's, so, it's so simple, but it's 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 one hundred percent true, isn't it? Yeah. And just just the last thing. What about? Um, I feel like a lot of people chase money, and they like for me. I feel like passion should be number one, and I feel like money is secondary. I feel like money follows passion. What's what's your thoughts on that? Um, I have kind of different thoughts on that. A little bit. I think that sometimes uh, money follows passion. I think sometimes you can have fun looking at money as a game. It doesn't have to necessarily be a passionate thing, but it can okay. be more of a fun game. Um, what do you mean by that? It, you're, you know, because I think when you your passion, if you're a passionate person, you can also get kind of wrapped up in the idea of money in a passionate way, which is not good. Um, but if you look at money a little bit more like it's just money, it's a game, and you can always make it, you know, like we're in America, which we're really blessed to be here, first yeah. of all. There's almost an infinite ways you can go and make money and, and really even enough that. money, you know, to uh, pay for your bills or to have yeah. food and all that stuff. Like you're never going to be in that situation unless you really just give up, you know, yeah. and don't want to do anything anymore or don't want to learn or anything like that. So what I mean is there's always ways to figure out, like, how do I turn this $100 into $200? How do I turn this $200 into $400? $400 into $800? Like, how do I double my money all so the that's, time? that's the game you're talking about. That's the game I'm talking gotcha. about. Yeah, okay. and if you can figure that out, because there's so many ways to do that, and if you're patient, right, this is the part that is hard for people to understand. Because we're in America, there's a lot of people that sell you that get rich quick you know invest in social media is really not helping with that is it? no it's not yeah. and that's why i actually have stayed away from bitcoin and all that stuff a little bit too because i mean you know you in your dms you get all these people like oh like so and so turned my five thousand dollars into mm. twenty five thousand dollars and i was like if so and so was really doing that he'd be too busy making billions of dollars I for you messaging me. why would he be, yeah, yeah why would you be messaging rich. me uh, Why does he need my five thousand dollars? Jeff Bezos not messaging you, is he? No, how to make money. he's not. Neither he's is Elon. Yeah. Neither is yeah. None <laughs> that's, of the, that's exactly what I think. Yeah, none of the big Wall Street traders are emailing me, like, or sending me messages. But some random dude with like a thousand followers yeah. on Instagram is messaging me. Yeah, like, come on, and I man. Think it come, what what generation did you say we are? Um, we are. Well, I don't know. I read something that we are a, the bridge generation. Like, we're in between. Uh, like 
X and Y or something like that. We're the, like this weird uh, ten, like nine year gap where we are remember both. Like we remember gotcha. touch dial phones, yeah. But we were raised with like video games were new technology. Yeah, yeah. We they we em- kinda... we embraced both things, so we like kind of have our hands on both. Yeah. Whereas people like ten years after us only grew up like TVs. Like they remember disconnected. With, dis- yeah, they're yeah. they're completely disconnected to like what people before us. Were. And I think I think the beauty about our generation is. We have patience, and we realize things don't happen overnight. Nope. Um, and I feel like through social media, and I feel like the younger generation generally, and I'm not speaking for everybody because that's not fair, but I feel like a lot of people think it's it happens quickly. Yeah. Like the gym, being in the gym for 25 years, five days a week for 25 years to get where I'm at, that's a big commitment. It doesn't happen overnight. I don't care what you do. Yeah. And business is the same. Money's the same. Investing's the same. Real estate's the same. Yep. It's a, It's... I'm a big believer that the, the, you f- focus more on the journey than the reward. I enjoy the journey a lot more than the reward. That's exactly right. I enjoy dieting more than I do being shredded. I enjoy make, like making mistakes, building a business more than I do like, oh yeah, I'm kicking butt right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So how, how do you kind of get someone to develop patience and like, what do you, what do you tell someone? Like it, it's not, you don't need to be rich tomorrow, do you? No, you don't. I think, you know what I think would help with patience is an actual plan. And any successful person that is, you know, ultra successful has like a plan, like a real plan. They don't just like, I'm going to start this business. They kind of plan it out, you know, and then they kind of go backwards in steps and like how they're going to actually make it come to fruition. Kind of like reverse engineering. Yeah, you reverse engineer. You say, okay, I want to have this plant business, you know, that sells plants or whatever. And that's great. So, okay, so you need a location. You need this. And then like, how are you going to get the location? Okay, so you need this much down for this to happen. And how are you going to get that? And, you know, you make an actual plan that plans it out. And then, of course, it's going to change. Something will pop up. Oh, you need this permit. <laughs> okay, well, now you got to modify your plan. But you just kind of keep doing that until you get to that point. And then guess what? When you get to that goal, you're going to be like, well, how do I make, you know, 10 times my, you know, profit? Okay, yeah. well, here's my next plan, right? So I think that's important is having a plan and, and having a plan that's, I don't want to say a patient plan because some people can do it faster than others. But having a plan because you know that you're not going to be able to, you know, do certain things just in one year and i've heard it before and i forgot who said it but i totally agree with this is people underestimate what you can do in five years and overestimate what they can do in one you know and i 100 percent like agree with that i like that because you can really change your life in five years completely change your life in yeah, five years which are, yeah like. but you're not going to get a whole lot done in just one so like you know that's where that patience has to okay. come in you know, and, and uh, I think someone else, I was listening to a guy who talks about taking a thousand bucks and doubling it, right? If you double that th- that thousand dollars in two years, you'll have two, or in one year, you'll have two. On year three, at the end of, you know, year three, you'll have four, then you'll have eight, then you'll have 16, then you'll have, you know, 32. And then all of a sudden, like, it starts to really multiply. Get significant. Yeah, by the time you get to 10, you're over a million dollars. Yeah, Like, okay. if you can be... That's what I'm talking little, about. Little baby steps. Just yeah, double, like focusing on that one. Thing. Don't worry, taking a thousand bucks and making you know a hundred grand. Why don't you just turn it into two? Yeah, okay. and then turn it into four. And if that means, hey, now I got four thousand, I can go put down on this you know property at three point five percent, and then maybe start there because then that's going to double in mm. another year. And you're going to hear you say that. I, it seems feasible. <laughs> Yeah, it seems very like turning grand into two, two to four seems very feasible. Right? right? It's like, hey, you need ten thousand dollars end of the year. I'm like, okay, gotcha. It actually takes the pressure off, and I guarantee you, most people can figure out a way to double their money mm. within a year mm. doing something that's not super risky. There's yeah. gonna obviously there's gonna be risk no matter what you do because just being alive is risky. Yeah. Going outside is risky. You know, so mm. there's gonna be risk, but you can mitigate that quite a bit if you just think a little more long term. Gotcha. Just finish off. Um, your favorite quote and why? Oh man, I feel like you got a ton. I and you know <laughs> that's why I that's probably why I don't have a favorite. What what some of the, what are some of them? <sighs> you seem like a quote type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorites, probably that it's always stuck with me, is um, there is no path to happiness. Happiness is the way. Is probably. Yeah, that's probably my favorite one that's always stuck with me because 
That kind of reflects you, doesn't it? Yeah, well, in those yeah. moments where you start to feel like, because, you know, especially with guys like us who are trying to get stuff done, we have goals, we have um, things we, you know, we want to double our money, we want to do this, we want to do that. we got all these things we want to do, and it, it gets easy to fall into the trap of like, oh, my happiness is going to be when I can afford this, yeah. when I get this much income. And you got to, and like you said, it's the journey, right? And that's 100% true, but more than that, it's like happiness is like an inside job. It just starts with just being happy. Yeah, and that's, being it's, like, it's, not, it's, it's not about that. It, yeah. It's not about that. And it's that's, focusing on being happy today in this present moment, yep. appreciating, like you said, just being alive and yep. being healthy and the ability to do whatever you want. It's, yep, because you're going to get there, and then what? You're going to be all driven by these other you know, outside circumstances, and you're going to feel super empty when you get there because that was the only thing that you thought was going to yeah. make you happy. And then you get there, and you realize it didn't make you happy because you weren't happy to begin with. So yeah. you're not just going to all of a sudden be happy because you got there. That's very interesting. I 100% agree. That's yeah. very interesting. So just be happy, man. Yeah. Don't worry about it so much. Love it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for your time. That was amazing. Um, love picking your brain. Love getting a little bit more depth on you. Awesome, man. So, it was fun. It was cool. a lot of fun. Thank you. Thanks, Brennan.